we can start uh, by from a short position and uh, to have uh, good results from our experiment in flow cytometry. Uh, there are different factors that can impact on the good results of your experiment. In this slide, uh, I cited uh, two factors, but a third is uh, uh, um, this, um, pointed before by Diana, and uh, the preparation of sample and a good instrument setup is the key factor to have a good results in flow cytometry experiment. Over the year, with uh, the progression and introduction of a multicolor instrument in a polychromatic scenario, the first factor uh, that uh, I'd like to point you is the panel design. The panel design is not only put together the reagent, but uh, consider the knowledge of the biology of your sample, the knowledge of the, the instrument and the reagent you use. So all these three factors is very, very important to define and to obtain good results from your flow cytometry experiment. In this uh, talk, my attention is, um, is, um, is pointed on instrument setup. So in the next slide, I cover the main uh, step in uh, instrument setup uh, for flow cytometry experiment. First, uh, I want to add uh, another uh, consideration about uh, the instrumental performance. It's important to check uh, sometimes every day, depends on what you are doing, uh, the good performance of uh, your instrument. And for example, from uh, uh, inside the the, the series of BD instrument, all of our platform included GST system. What is it? It's a combo of fully automatic software and reagent for BD digital flow cytometer that defined and characterized baseline performance using different parameters. I don't want to uh, deeper uh, in this uh, context, but uh, many, many, uh, many of uh, you probably know. Optimize a standard cytometer setup and track cytometer performance. So, in my opinion, the first check you have to do is evaluate if the instrument is performing well or not and you have the tool to do this. In general, we do offer cytometer setup and tracking module. Other instruments offer, I, I'm sure, other type of control. I suggest you to verify the performance of your instrument to be sure that what you see in your experiment is the result of a biology variance and not an artifact of some instrument failure. So the next consideration is that any instrument set up for multicolor experiment from two to 20 or actually to 50 and more cost of two main steps. The first step is the choice of PMT voltage for scattering and fluorescence parameter. The second step is the calculation of compensation. Well, starting what we have to prepare to sit down beside in front of our flow cytometer, we have to have 
and a stain control sample, power blank cells to evaluate the autofluorescence of cells. Keep in mind, in, flow, in a flow cytometry, we want to see the autofluorescence of the cell. Is our cell. Then I want to keep with me a single stain control sample, one for any color I use in my panel. And this uh, series, uh, series is uh, useful to calculate compensation. Finally, but not least important, last but not least, as uh, English said, the control for multicolor stain sample. You can use a full min minus one control and full color sample to verify that the staining is performing as expected. Well, starting from regulating voltage, we can use the unstained sample and adjust forward and size scatter parameter to individuate the population of interest. This picture is showed before, is a, a typical um, peripheral lysed peripheral blood from human. And the first consideration is to find the correct uh, value of side and force to individuate, for example, lymphocytes, monocytes, and granulocytes. So this is the first step. When I see my sample, I can select one population of interest inside this type of sample. The next step is regulate the voltage in order to have the best setting. Actually, there are a lot of uh, uh, different inputs in this sense, but uh, a very basic and general rule we can use is to regulate the PMT voltage in order to have the autofluorescence of the cells in the first quartile of my plot. This is a very, very general rule and it is uh, used in a middle, low, middle parameter, multi-parameter scenario. And for example, I work with uh, Anto or uh, in a six color setup, this is the redoubt we have using all six color. As you seen in PT, PE, RCP, PCY7, APC, and APCCY7, more or less in this example, I regulated the PMT voltage in order to have the signal unstained cells in the first part of my graph, okay? This is a general rule. But uh, this rule uh, works well always, uh, uh, more or less. Uh, to be honest, uh, in my opinion, this approach uh, can work well uh, with uh, a middle, low middle number of parameter, six, eight, uh, 10 parameter of, uh, of, uh, of, of eight, eight, 10 parameters. But the recent and polychromatic flow cytometry, this method cannot be very successful and different new methods are actually proposed. In the next slide, I report for you just to an input to have a lecture for, for a good night. Some very important paper has reference deriving from the school of Stephen Perfetto and Mario Roder, for example, or inside 
deriving from the work of uh, BD researcher. So we have different methods. Finally, for example, uh, if uh, some of you are working on a multicolor instrument from celesta to fortessa or symphony, maybe is already uh, reached by a different approach that is named voltration. What is it, the voltration method? The voltration method is a process to adjust voltage for any channel in order to, uh, to have the top of a negative and positive population. This method is based on the measure of a stain index. What is it, the stain index? Consider the plot I indicating you is a typical CD4 staining in a BV 510 or in other, in other uh, dyes uh, you have. And you, in this staining, you can, um, you can individuate a negative population and a positive. The stain index is the difference between the mean flourish intensity of positive minus the mean flourish intensity of negative, uh, fracted the standard deviation of a negative population. This index uh, includes in itself uh, different factors that depend from the voltage we choose, but also from the nature of the dye and obviously of the antigen I can choose. But in general, when we propose this method, we use CD4 as a standard, standard uh, antigen. And what we do? We do a scan for any parameter of all the PNT voltage, starting from more or less 250 until the out of scale. And then we put, uh, we put in a graph the PNT voltage versus the stain index. The PNT voltage of now will be the point after uh, which the stain index no, not, doesn't increase more. This is a method. It is only, I, I, I am aware that it is uh, not so easy, but uh, just to um, pawn, uh, just to underline two different approaches. The basic rule that uh, is always a gold standard, and uh, we see my how to flourish and signal in the first quartile of my plot. On the other hand, most recent input deriving from the B researcher or the school of uh, Stephen Perfetto and the Mario Rorder at NAH in USA. And finally, a different method. Maybe you can already view in the lab with a multi-parameter instrument. Anyway, the first step is to individuate the right voltage for your cells. Then the second step of an instrument setting procedure requires the calculation of compensation. First, what is it? Compensation. Compensation is a correction of signal spillover between different channels. If you want a smile in front of compensation, compensation is log and date of any flow cytometry people. And there is an important aspect of uh, the valutation because a wrong compensation can introduce artifact in your data. So 
as first consideration what uh, we have to do before Diana has that the optical system of any flow cytometry is made of different filter, bump filter, to select the peak of different light. But other spectra are not linear, lining, but are curved. So we have a different zone in which they overlap each other. So for example, consider the the, the, the area from 50 and from 500 to 600 nanometer in this cartoon. You can individuate different zone of overlap between the spectra. For example, this is a, um, a typical array of uh, a blue laser in a canto, for example, you have four different colors, four different channels with a different bump filter to collect the specific uh, uh, main fluorescence deriving from each dye, but you can't avoid the spectral overlap, it's physical. So, Compensation is the correction of this area of overlap. Look at this very simplified situation. If I have a sample stained poly with fizzy dye, I expect to have only fizzy uh, positive salts and negative, for example, for P or for PCPCY 5.5. But when I put my sample under the instrument and look at the dot plot, this a double population in the first and the upper plot, and a middle positive for PCP in the bottom. What is it? This is this area this piece of the spectra of the Fizzi that overlaps in the other band filter. Compensate means to correct the Fizzi, uh, sorry, correct the PE and the Percy PCY 5.5 signal, subtracting a certain percent of Fizzi signal. So, do you have always two choice? PC minus P or P minus PC? You have, it's, it's important to understand and uh, to have in the ends, which is the right, uh, right line. When I increase the percent of the PC, Subtract to PT and Percy PCY 5.5 5 detector, I obtain this type of distribution. If I want to have a mathematical readout, if this sample is stained only with PC, it could be negative both for P both for per CP. So the population in Q3 and Q4 in the bottom and in the upper plot have the, should have the same mean fluorescence intensity for P and for per CP. This is the consequence of the compensation. Why the compensation is so important and why you can introduce the artifact in your data. Look at this three dot plot. This is, the first one is with correct compensation under to low overcompensation too much. If you consider only a percent, okay, it's not so uh, 
um, so bad because the statistic table give me always the same population. But if I want to uh, evaluate, it, for example, the increase or the decrease of all the induction of the my signal in P, I can introduce uh, um, an artifact and overestimate or underestimate the cells that result positive, double positive. So it's very important to have a good manage of compensation. This is a result of our six color before view. So I uh, I regulated my flow, my PNT voltage in order to have the orange population in the first part and look, all the blue and orange are aligned versus the parameter reported in the uh, uh, Y axis. And they have the same uh, median of fluorescence. This is the result. Uh, some notes to add. Uh, I anticipated that to calculate compensation, I have um, I ask for one single stain control to any color I use in your panel and underline any color, not any antigen. What we can use if you have cells and if you have clear antigen, we can use cells. It's a good, but the, 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 the need is to have enough cells and to have in lab enough antibody that recognize clear antigen. In alternative, I can use bits. And in this sense, for example, we the offer top bits that are able to bind immunoglobulin from mouse or from rat or from, or from hamster, independently of the specificity of the antibody. And in this case, the, console, the, 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 the compensation control contains unstained bits, a bit stained with a single color. Some is necessary to compensate using exactly the same antigen. Is that the note I doing uh, before? If uh, I have more or less high antigen density antigen in my in my serial, okay. I can use, for example, thinking to lymphocyte, CD3, CD4, CD8. I don't use in this very simple panel CD25 or more or less. Why? Because maybe it's not expressed very high and is expressed from a very, very small percent of cells in my sample. So in general, for example, I can use CD3 and CD4 and CD8, other and other similar lineage marker to create my compensation. The point is not the antigen, the point is the color and the exact match with the color I use to calculate compensation and the color I put in my mix in the final sample. is a, not always a, a very appreciated, but also a PC and an Alexa 488 is different. In this case, the difference is not so big, but for example, if I use Pizzi or Brilliant View 515, they are very different to Orochrome for brightness and the results could be different. 
So keep in mind, just the for you. Finally, but uh, not, uh, not uh, less important, the setup has to be validated. We have a positive and negative control is possible. So for example, if I am performing a live and dead or an apoptosis say, it's always recommended to have inside my sample the negative control live and the positive control, a sample that I push to die. Or in other context, if I looking for cytokine production, I've unstimulated and stimulated with, I don't know, chemical uh, inducer, PMA and Yonomycin or other substance you can use. Keeping in mind all these, uh, these uh, factors, we see together the performance is good and, and, I, and I can obtain a good resolution of my population. In this case, there is an example uh, of a sample run by ARIA, a salt sorter, ARIA fusion, and you can look all the population you are interested in. Well, I think uh, to, to give you some uh, hint uh, and just a short uh, uh, input to keep in mind in your flow cytometry experiment. And uh, I want to thank you for your attention and leave my contact if you want to uh, contact me for questions.